G'day ladies and gentlemen, my name's Isaac Butterfield and over the past couple of weeks I have toured around the great country, the superpower, the United States of America. Right now I am in Los Angeles right next to the airport before I head back to Australia tomorrow and I tell you what, I have noticed some very peculiar things, some big differences between Australia, the great land down under and America. On the first day that I was here, I saw some very interesting sights. I saw some dude who thought he was the next Biggie Smalls. I saw a naked lady, an entire naked old lady on the beach, complete pancake fucking ass. It was very interesting. And I saw a dude on the streets injecting himself with something that I can only describe as probably not insulin. There are huge differences between the country that I'm in right now, America, and where I call home, Australia. And ladies and gentlemen, I've compiled a list for you so you can understand the biggest differences between Australia and America. But before we get started, this video is brought to you by manscaped.com. Little Dixon, what's happening? Have you checked your balls lately? Um, I don't know. Are they in your handbag? I don't think they're in your handbag. They're usually in your handbag. I'm being serious, fuckface. Jesus. Did you know one man every day, every hour, is diagnosed with testicular cancer? Little Dixon, you and I love Manscaped, particularly the Lawmail 4.0. And I tell you what, they have partnered up with the Testicular Cancer Society to spread awareness of men's health and early cancer detection. Testicular cancer is the most common cancer amongst young men. It's a serious illness, particularly with men aged 18 to 35. And the Testicular Cancer Society look after fighters, survivors, and families. April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. So next time you lads are in the shower soaping up your balls, have a feel, have a gander, and have a look that everything looks all right. If not, go to your GP and check your balls. Little bit of Buttsman information. I went to my doctor recently to check out a lump. Turns out it was a cyst. Oh, way too much information. Yuck. Hey, little dicky, why don't you check my balls out for me? You bring those shriveled little raisins anywhere near me, Butterfield, and I'll lop them off. Did I mention I hate you? Ah, fair enough. That's a real bloody shame. Ladies and gentlemen, head to manscaped.com forward slash Butterfield for 20% off and free international shipping. And don't forget to check your pair, gentlemen. I want you to do it right now. Yeah, touch them while I'm looking at you. Now, back to the video. Number one, tipping. Okay, tipping is a massive thing here because American companies pay their employees I think the technical term in the financial sector is fuck all. Like if you work at a cafe, you might get $5 an hour. So they rely on tips from customers to make a decent livable wage. But can I just say this? Fuck your tipping. Fuck off, get fucked. If you've never been to America, this is how it works. Once you've bought something, you've bought a beer, you've bought a meal, you pay for that meal, and then you have to pay an extra 20 or 25% to tip the person who's brought the plate to you. It is absolutely fucked. And even if you hate the person that gave you the things, you still have to tip them. If you tip them any less than 15%, you may as well have walked over there, shoved your finger up their ass and said, fuck you into their ear. The second big difference is you crazy motherfuckers drive on the wrong side of the road, okay? And I know that they're gonna sit there and say, no, obviously you idiots in Australia drive on the wrong side of the road, but I'm the one with the camera, so suck a big fat cock. When you come to America and you realize they drive on the other side of the road, you're stuck with a few things you need to work out. One of them being, I don't know how to cross a road. You look like an idiot. When you go to cross the road, you're looking in the wrong direction because the cars are coming from the other direction. You're gonna get hit, all right? There's no looking left, then right. You have to look right, then left. That is so confusing. The third big difference, and this is huge. Americans, I'm sorry, are fucking rude. Like, you guys are so rude. Here's a real scenario, okay? We were in an airport the other day. I misplaced my water bottle. Side note, it was in my back pocket. And there was a very similar water bottle with the dude next to me on the table in front of me. I said, excuse me, mate, is that your water bottle? He looked at me deep in my eyes and he goes, uh-huh, why? Why do you want to know if it's my water bottle? I thought, what the fuck, mate? I'm just asking, I'm trying to work something. 
in Australia. You know what we do? You know what we fucking do? If someone was confused about whose water bottle was who, we would give them our water bottle, we'd build them a house, we'd tuck their grandma into bed, and we'd go down on her just because we're good fucking people. On that exact same day, we'd only been in the country for a few hours, the dude on the plane that we were on told a mother with a crying child to tell that child to keep it down. Oh yeah, you're gonna have a conversation with a baby about not crying? But how is that conversation gonna go? Excuse me, fucking Steve, little baby Steve. You know you're crying and upsetting people. And what, Steve's gonna sit there and go, you're right, mum, I really shouldn't be doing this, you fucking idiot. In Australia, if you said that to a mother and a child, the entire army would be deployed to your house and you'd be sh blown the fuck up. Saying all that, I only went to New York, LA, and Florida. The Florida people were actually quite nice. New York, LA, Suck me off. Number four is similar to the last one. It's the idea of saying thank you. In New York and LA, we found that people don't know how to act when an Australian says thank you. If I give you something, what do you say? You say thank you and I say, hey, no worries. Too easy, all good. In America, do you know what they say when you say thank you for something? They say, uh-huh. Fuck off with your uh -huh's, all right? Just say, no worries. Do you know how much that upsets me? Pick up your polite game. It's not that fucking hard. America, make chivalry great again. Number five, and this isn't a difference, but this is something you'll notice as an Australian when you get to America, that you go full bogan. Now, I don't know if all Americans know what the term bogan is, but it's sort of like a redneck, right? So when I stepped foot in America, I went from me talking like me right now, quite, you know, I'm good at enunciating most words and all that type of shit to within about five minutes walking up to people going g'day mate you want to know if I can get a little can I get a lift on that uber over there big fella like people didn't know what the fuck I was saying it's truth too easy big fella oh bloody yeah nah too easy people didn't know what the fuck I was saying I went so full bogan Aussie immediately when I stepped foot in this country I don't know why I just think it's because we know that Americans like Australian accents and as soon as they hear it, they go wow you're an Aussie that's so cool and I'm like yeah mate I'm a fucking Aussie yeah, I fucking rode a kangaroo to fucking Qantas's fucking airport. The Prime Minister shook me in as I flew off and I cracked a Foster's beer on the way. Jesus Christ, I'm drunk and I got an echidna up my ass. How fucking good am I? Even my beautiful fiance Claire, she hammed it up as well. This is an exact quote from her. She said this to the lady at TSA. Fucking get a struth a barramundi around here. Fucking Vegemite. Bindi Irwin. But the great thing about America is you can have any accent and you are welcome unless you have an Arabic accent. They're not so much. Number six, the food is almost better in America. Now, what I mean by that is the food is bigger. Now I am, you know, I'm not fat, but I'm not skinny. I'm somewhere in the middle, but I'm a fat boy at heart. And when I see the portion sizes in America, my food dick, whatever that is, gets real bloody hard. My first night in America, Claire and I got a pizza each. And we didn't know what our size to order or anything like that. We just ordered some and it was like $60 US, but they came and they were huge, right? They weighed about four kilos. And I tell you what, I'm pretty sure the Los Angeles sewer system was blocked from a day from the both of us. Number seven, ladies and gentlemen. The alcohol is so cheap. There was a bottle of Smirnoff at this supermarket I was at last night. It was like two hands. It was huge. It was massive. I think it was almost two liters and it was 16 US dollars, which I think is like 21 bucks Australian. We get fucked with taxes in Australia when it comes to alcohol. It is horrible. It is highway fucking robbery. And you have alcohol everywhere. You got it in pharmacies, shopping centers, gas stations, which are petrol stations. You got them everywhere you might need them, abortion centers, you have alcohol everywhere. It's always at an arm's reach, which is really handy if you're a homeless person who is an alcohol dependent. And I know why this happens, right? I know why this happens. I know why it's so expensive in Australia. You've heard of big pharma or big, big oil, these big powers that be that keep the prices high or low or whatever, keep people in government. This is big goon. All right, you know the wine casks that Australian young people drink? Big goon is the reason that Australians have to drink expensive alcohol, all right? Because so when you're a kid and you start drinking for the first time, you don't go and get the expensive stuff. You're stuck with the goon, which is $12, gets you extremely drunk, probably makes you lose your virginity, and you'll probably end up pregnant, which is great because you can come over to America, go to one of their abortion centers, and have a couple of beers on me. Number eight, the big difference here is no one understands what Australians are on about. Colloquial Colloquialisms do not work here. Colloquialism being a term or a phrase 
that is a local language. In Australia, we have heaps of them. Dry as a dead dingo's donger. That means it's really dry out, right? Makes complete fucking sense. I was in an Uber the other day that nearly got sideswiped by a Porsche, right? It was really, really crazy. It happened really quick. And I said to old mate, oh, spew, and that was bloody close. He looked at me like I just said to him, oi, governor, can I shine your shoes? It was ridiculous. He was like, what the fuck is this prick talking about? What are we, in the fucking 1800s? Or that old lady at the shopping center the other night. I said, hey, how She looked at me like I just groped her on the tit. I did grope her on the tit, but don't look at me like that. Christ, have some respect. Anyway, fuck you and not understanding my colloquialisms. Number nine, the big difference is tourism. There's so many great things to see in America. In New York, you could spend months there walking around. And we, we, we did about 20,000 steps every day and we still didn't get to see everything. In Australia, okay, if you come to Australia, you see the Great Barrier Reef, you fly over it there, you've seen it. It's a big fucking coral reef. You go to the Sydney Harbour Bridge, there's a bridge, you know, you've seen bridges before. And you go to Melbourne and see a protest or something. That is fucking it. There's nothing to see in Australia. Piss off. Number 10 and the last big difference is comedy. I was lucky to see Joe Rogan here uh, do a show in Jacksonville in Florida. A massive crowd, about 15,000 people. Tony Hinchcliffe opened up for him. And you know what I learned? I learned that in Australia, we are the biggest pussies when it comes to stand-up comedy. We are so terrified about not getting spots on the project or on the, the Melbourne International Comedy Festival Roadshow or on Channel 10. Comedians refuse to do jokes that push the boundaries. In Australia, we are fucking scared and that shit needs to stop. I was so motivated after I saw that show. I thought to myself, oh my God, I've been hamstringing myself not doing particular jokes because I feel like they're too offensive and I'm going to get cancelled again. Fuck that. Not anymore. I'm fucking going for it, ladies and gentlemen. If I think something's funny, I'm going to tell it to a crowd and if they think it's funny, then fucking oath, I'll keep doing it. And on that topic, come and see me live. I'm doing shows all around Australia and... I should be in America by the end of the year doing some shows. So if you're from America, let me know on my website. Go over there and sign up to get an email when I'm on tour. I love your country. Your people are weird. And I tell you what, New York, you got a lot of people that talk to themselves. I feel like you need some, you know, chemtrails just to fly over there with some antipsychotics. And that's the problem solved. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Be dick sticks. Toodaloo. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the video. Your support means absolutely everything. If you haven't subscribed, do it right now. You keep me dogs fed and I love you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, there's three new videos on this channel every week. And if you want more, you can head over to Little Buttsman, which is the second channel. Ladies and gentlemen, there is more. What about the podcast each and every week? It's available on Spotify and YouTube as well. And I'm also on tour right now around the country doing my show, Cancel Me Now. Stand-up comedy is back, ladies and gentlemen. And please, for Christ's sake, follow me on Instagram. I'm very lonely. Love you. Bye.